Now let's go through the three primary causes. These are the big pillars that really contributes to insulin resistance in, in cells, rodents, and humans. First one is inflammation. This is one that I feel pretty strongly about and I'm quite familiar with because it was largely the focus of my postdoctoral fellowship research many, many years ago and work that I had continued and have uh, since then and continue to contribute to now. So in this case of the inflammation, it's important for you to appreciate that when I say inflammation, I don't necessarily, I don't mean an immune response. And I don't mean an angry red oozing scratch on your arm that's gotten infected. When we, when I say inflammation, I actually just want you to think that of, of a pathway within virtually every cell of the body. And that when this pathway is activated, it, it is part of a if it were, if we were talking about an immune cell, it would be part of a normal immune response. But for example, muscle cells, muscle cells have an inflammatory pathway or multiple, and those aren't immune cells. Fat cells have an inflammatory pathway, and those aren't immune cells. Those aren't white blood cells that are part of an immune response to defend the body against infection. But all of these cells <clears throat> have these inflammatory pathways. And what's interesting in the muscle, for example, that you activate the inflammatory pathway and the muscle isn't going to start producing antibodies, but it actually then shows this intersection of the immune system or the inflammatory system and the metabolic system. So anytime you activate inflammatory pathways within a cell, you cause that cell to have a diminished response to insulin resistance. So at, cell, at a cell level, you can just incubate cells with an inflammatory protein, like, for example, C-reactive protein. Have you heard of that? Does that one sound familiar? CRP or C-reactive protein is a protein that has been increasingly measured in clinical tests because it's such a good marker of inflammation and just overall cardiometabolic health. So if I have muscle cells or fat cells or liver cells or brain cells, and I put C-reactive protein in that little culture bath with the cells, and then I test how the cells respond to insulin, it will be diminished. The insulin response will be turned down. Same thing goes for animals. If you induce an inflammatory response in animals, they become demonstrably insulin resistant, and the same thing happens in humans. In fact, it has been fascinating for me to notice during this period of time over the last few years where everyone's much more mindful of their immune health that people, and at the same time, people are wearing more continuous glucose monitors. It's been interesting to see how people can almost predict that they have a cold or a flu coming on because they notice that their blood glucose levels start to climb and get more variable, a general sign of insulin resistance. And indeed, that is the case. In humans, if you induce an immune response, the body will become more insulin resistant if you activate those inflammatory pathways. In, in fact, there's some fascinating publications that have touched on this before that have looked at rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, like every autoimmune disease, rheumatoid arthritis has an ebb and a flow to it. It will, it will have periods of time where it's really active and aggressive and painful and other periods of time where it starts to retreat and settles down a little bit you can actually track the insulin resistance that goes with it. That as the body is activating an immune response, or insulin resistance goes with it. So to sum all of that up, inflammation is we could call the, the first primary cause of insulin resistance. 